All right, well, you know, folks, whenever we do a tasting, I like to bring in some food that's typical from that region, and it's hard to do a Spanish tasting without a little ham on the serrano. So we got a little bit left because it was a big leg and a small amount of people last night, but, you know, that just means we got more wine to drink. I don't mind having a small group as long as it's a focus group, and we had some people that really loved Spanish wines in last night. And, hey, we got a little bit left over. If anybody's thirsty and wants to come down here and try, try what we got left, Val de Gates is still left Really good. That's what I'm drinking right now. All right, but everything pretty good last night. We started out with a little Martin Verdugo wine, this Hovan, which uh, Young Vines. And, uh, you know, this was a really nice, light uh, Tempranillo can have this uh, lovely elegance to it and finesse. And almost all these wines we had last night, a little more on the lighter side of Tempranillo, not really overly extracted, overly oaky, which some of these new style wines from Ibera can almost resemble Napa Cabernet Sauvignon because they're picked very, very ripe and put in new oak. A lot of perfume and spice from the oak influencing the wine when it's very young. But uh, the Martin Verdugo Hovan, I made my favorite wine from Martin Verdugo, especially for the money, for $14, what we offered it last night. Like kind of roasted coffee, red cherry fruit, a little raw red strawberry, and notes of dried meat there. Similar to what you get in most wines from Ribeiro del Duero, but light on the tongue, very refreshing, really nice little bottle of wine, finishing with some cocoa spice. The Barica and the Crianza for me from Martin Verdugo, I mean, they're decent wines. A Barica, a little bit tannic. And the Crianza, a little bit more polished and a little bit more complex. Um, but like I said, for the money, I think maybe the Hovan took it for this lineup from Verdugo for me. The Aerocal next. Also a lighter style wine. Maybe would have shown this after the Hovan from Martin Verdugo. But wanted to keep those wines together. And 100% uh, Tempranillo, entry-level wine. And really light but very seductive. And some lovely spice and earth notes there. And uh, really light tannin and uh, really a crowd pleaser, fourteen dollars and fifty cents. The Hermano Sastre Vigna Strastre, another lighter style um, Tempranillo, but very elegant. Uh, really nice that little smoky note and wild strawberry fruit showing on the nose. Very seductive. It's a little bit of raw steak here as well. Organically, biodynamically farmed vineyard. Nice freshness on the finish. Um, next up, the Emilio Moro, which this wine is always, I mean, a stunner when you open it up in a group like this. And it took a little while for this wine to open up, but man, when it did, uh, really showing nicely some vanilla spice from the oak there, some new leather, some incense, and a lovely black cherry and plum-like fruit. And a little more lighter and elegant style vintage, this 2007 vintage from Ribeiro, but uh, this wine always has some Quijones. And, uh, you know, after an hour or two being open, you can just tell this wine's going to evolve nicely in your cellar. As is the 2007 Pesquera, which Alejandro Fernandez, you know, one of the flag bearers for Ribeiro del Duero, their Crianza, always one of the top wines, in my opinion, maybe a little lighter style again because of the vintage, showed a nice array of Asian spice, incense, and herbal notes to the nose, light and savory wine on the palate, but had a nice length on the finish and very good balance. This is a wine, too, that you know, to me, may need a little more time also, and uh, will definitely benefit from, from some cellaring. The Finca Torre Milano's 2006 Los Cantos, this has been the most popular wine from Rivera del Duro in the store the last year. This wine really over-delivers 20 to 40-year-old vines, uh, real higher elevation, um, really nice complexity on the nose, black raspberry-like fruit, dusty earth, dried sausage, meaty notes, lovely spice on the tongue with a solid core of fruit, ripe and round tannins, really nice balance in this wine. Uh, excellent little bottle of Tempranillo for 21 bucks. And then the Domena Tauta, this is a small property and 100% Tinto de Toro, 90% of their vines are ungrafted. This is one of the few places in the world where you find vines on their own rootstock. Most everywhere else have experienced this phylloxera, so they've had to use a rootstock that's resistant to that root louse. But in Toro, some very old ungrafted vines, you get some really, uh, oh, some great wines with incredible character here in concentration. And uh, this wine, one of them, a really nice array of spices, brown spices, fresh dried kind of violet nuance, and a lovely uh, seductive ripe fruit showing on the tongue, blackberry, black cherry, and a good freshness, nice balance on the on the finish, really nice Ribeiro del Duero. The Casa Juice, uh, kind of taking a step up here, these last two wines 
getting into that kind of concentrated and rich style, a little more California Cabernet-esque, really nice toasty oak, some wild strawberry jam, a little bit of peppery spice there showing on the notes, some nice floral notes, lovely concentration and depth of flavors, and uh, some good freshness, some nice steak kind of nuance on the finish here. But a really nice bottle of te uh, Tempranillo from Ribera and uh, getting a little bigger. Like I said, the Alto, this wine is huge. I remember tasting this wine for the first time in a cantina in Madrid with Alejandro, for, with, with uh, I'm sorry, Mariano Garcia, who's one of the uh, joint venture, one of the uh, gentlemen that uh, started this winery. And uh Outstanding. Just the color on this wine, opaque and dark. Lots of dark blackberry and blueberry fruit showing in this wine. Some graphite, toasty oak, espresso, really complex bouquet. Ripe and jammy on the tongue, but still lovely balance in this wine. Lovely freshness on the finish. Finish, lovely length. One of the best wines coming from a barrel del Duero since its first vintage in 1999 at around $50 a bottle. All right, folks, that's what I had to drink last night. I'm your host. Andrew Lampasoni signing off for the Wine Watch, saying remember, always drink the good stuff first.